Hi everyone, Anthony Morganti here. In today's video, we're going to take a look at that so-called Lightroom killer called Photomator. Now you may or may not know that a few months ago, Apple bought out the company Pixelmator and all of their assets. One of their assets was an application that they called Pixelmator Photo. What Apple did is they've taken Pixelmator Photo and they tweaked it a little bit and they've rebranded it Photomator. It's available for Macs, iPhones, iPads, and Vision Pros. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Mac version. Now, you could download it for free from the App Store, but as soon as you try to use it, it's going to ask you to take out a subscription. Let me very quickly show you the pricing. I'll scroll down here and you'll see that you could get a yearly subscription for $29.99 a monthly subscription for $7.99, a lifetime subscription for $119.99, but it says here there's an exclusive lifetime offer for $79.99. I'm not sure where that is coming from because when I downloaded and installed it, it defaulted to a yearly subscription of $29.99 with a week free. Or I had the option of doing the monthly subscription for $7.99, or I had the option of doing the lifetime for $119.99. Nowhere did I see a way I could get a lifetime subscription for $79.99. So I don't know if that was a sale that is now over, but the pricing here hasn't been updated, and I'm not sure what all these other prices are. So the way it stands, the way I see it, is you could get a yearly for $29.99, a monthly for $7.99, or a lifetime for $119.99. If anyone knows how to get that $79.99 price, let us know in the comments. Now, as far as it being a Lightroom killer, I doubt it. It is very good, though, and let me just show you how to use it. I have it over here. All right, now, when you first start using it, it's going to ask you to access your photo library on your Mac. You know, this used to be called iPhotos. Now it's just called Photos. You don't have to grant it access, but if you do, you'll see your photos in your photo library here. You could edit one of these if you want, or you could just go to a folder of images on your computer. To do that, go to this little drop down here and go to Files, and then click Import. Now, on my desktop, I have a folder that I just created that I'm calling Photometer Test Images. I just did that for this video. So we'll open this folder of images, and you can see they all show up here. These are all raw files. And when you're in this kind of grid view, uh, you can give them star ratings or flags to do that. For example, on this image here, right in the middle. If I wanted to give this a favorite flag, I would tap the Z. Z isn't Z key on my keyboard and you can see that I give it a flag. It's called a favorite flag. If I want to give it a reject flag, like I don't like this image at all, tap the X key. If I want to unflag it, tap the U key. So you just need to remember those three keys, Z or Z, X, and U. If you want to give it a star rating, just hit the corresponding number key for the number of stars you want to give it up to five. So if I want to give this four stars, tap the four key, and you can see it has four star down here. Three, tap the three key. If you want to remove the stars altogether, tap the zero key. Now, if you want to start editing one of these photos, just double click on it. And I'm going to do this one of the monkey only because it has a lot of noise. And I want to show you that there is AI noise reduction in Photomator. And it needs to be cropped. And I want to show you how to crop in Photometer too. So I'm going to pick this one, just double click on it. And if I zoom in a little bit by hitting Command Plus on my Mac a few times and then kind of scroll around, you can see there is a considerable amount of noise. So it definitely needs noise reduced. To fit this to screen, hit Command Zero on your Mac and you fit it to screen. To reduce noise, uh, what you would do is go up to this like circle with three dots, click its little drop down, and you could go to Denoise. When you go to denoise, it will automatically start denoising your image. And you can see that there's a progress circle right in the middle with a percentage. And it goes pretty quick. When it's done, it gives you a split screen, split screen view that you can move around. Also, you could change the denoise intensity. By default, it's going to be at 100. So I can't make it any better. So I'll zoom in again by hitting Command Plus a couple times. 
and we'll scroll this way and I'll grab this middle thing and you can see there's before and there's after. So it did a pretty good job. Now, I don't think it's as good as Lightroom's built-in AI noise reduction, nor is it as good as like stuff from Topaz Labs or On One or, or you know, um, DxO or anything like that. It's okay, but it's, it's not as good as any of those other applications. When you're satisfied though, you just click done down here fit this to screen again again hit command zero so we've removed noise now i want to crop it so i'll go up here to the crop tool and the crop tool to me is a little kind of funky uh let me show you i'm going to auto straighten it let's say or let's say auto crop i should say all right i'm just going to do auto crop this uses ai to crop it you can see it cropped it all right you could take it or leave it i'm going to undo that by clicking reset down here um you also could just do like a free form crop just grab a handle and crop it you could go to the drop down, you could keep the original ratio, a custom ratio, or you could choose one of these presets. Now I want to crop this five by four um, or four by five. Let's say four by five. All right, let's say that's pretty good. But the thing is, did you notice there's no like five by four and there's no way that I know how to switch this. If I wanted to make this horizontal, I'm not sure. You just can't do it. But what I did find you could do instead, let me reset this is if I wanted this to be five by four, is I would go to custom, then here where it says width, I want this to be the five, right? So all I would do is put five here, go over to this one, now it's gonna look funny, but put four here, and this tab out of this by tapping the tab key. Now you can see I have that five by four uh, crop. So I could manually do it that way. But in this one, I do want the four by five, and, but I am gonna make it smaller. So we're gonna crop in relatively tight onto the uh onto his head i want to go really small because i want to show you something else in here so we're going to go really small like that i have the uh crossover point of the rule of thirds on the top right right on the uh, monkey's eye and so when you're satisfied with that just click uh, done and you'll go back here but what you would probably rather do do is if you're in the crop tool just click click to another tool they do have um this like automatic you know, just to automatically do editing. You have a repair tool, which uses AI. You can remove things from an image. So if you have, let's say, a scene, it has a garbage can in, you want to remove the garbage can, it will remove that. It also will do sensor spots, simple things like that. It also has a clone tool, which as far as I know, doesn't really use AI. It just, you know, clones. There isn't anything here though, where I need to do anything with these tools, but we will go to the edit tool. So after you're done cropping, uh, don't just click done because it brings you back to that grid view. Instead, just go like to your edit tools and then you'll be in edit mode. Now, most of the tools or many of the tools, not most, but many of them have this ML. That means machine learning. So you could get an auto adjustment, say, for white balance. So if I click on this, it will just automatically adjust temperature and tint for the scene. You could reset it here. So you can see it's a little bit cool here. As soon as I tap that ML, it warmed it up a little bit. Or you could just manually do it, or you could use an eyedropper, same way you would use an eyedropper in uh, Lightroom. Click on something that should be neutral, and it will give you a white balance adjustment for that. So it does a pretty good job as far as that is concerned. Then you have your basic adjustments. These all affect tone. Um, now, a lot of them are the same as, as Lightroom. If you're familiar with Lightroom, they, you know, there's shadows, so we could open up shadows. There's highlights. You can rein in the highlights a little. But then it gets a little different. Now, you do have an exposure slider, but it also has a brightness slider. And you may wonder, what's the difference? Well, brightness will affect the midtones more so than, like, it, say, exposure does. Exposure is more linear. It affects every pixel equally. So if you move it to the right, it's making every pixel brighter, even the brightest pixels brighter, and even the darkest pixels darker. You move it to left, does the same thing, but it just makes them darker. Where... Um, brightness just affects the midtones as much, so it doesn't affect the highlights or the shadows as much when you move it either way. So this might be a choice you would want to use in some instances. Then you could add contrast. Now, black point is if you're familiar with like Lightroom three, this is going back a long time ago. There was a black point slider, and this just you move it to the right, it just makes the blacks darker. You move it to the left, it makes them lighter. It's kind of like a black slider adjustment that's in Lightroom, but there's no real white point uh, slider. So then we have texture and clarity. 
Now you do have selective clarity uh, if you want to add clarity to or texture to just shadows, midtones, or highlights. You could do that there. Don't need to do it here. Now hue and saturation is for color. Let's add some vibrance uh, to the image. I'm overdoing it, obviously. Uh, I'm accidentally i guess uh selective colors like uh, hsl in lightroom where you could affects red oranges yellows greens independently affect the use saturation and brightness of each of these so let's say you know you think the yellow is too saturated you could uh go to the yellow little swatch there and you could take the yellow saturation down so it'll make it less saturated um don't know why i'd do that but i'll do it we have color balance uh, these are just the typical standard color wheels that you see in most applications uh, you have levels. Uh, this is what you'd find in a lot of applications, including like Photoshop. So you come in and adjust this a little bit. I kind of like, I like levels uh, adjustments. I do those a lot in Photoshop and in other applications that have them. And then there's curves, typical curves. And you go to the drop down. you have the red, green, and blue curve. You have the, dom or the uh, default RGB curve, and you have a luminance curve as well. If you want to use any of those in this image i don't need to if you have a replace color you could use the eyedropper to pick a color then use the second eyedropper to replace that color with another color and then you could adjust the sliders to taste it's kind of a unique adjustment but we don't need to do it here we have a fade adjustment here this we want to make it i guess more matte looking you could try to do that here but it seems to not be working that well on this specific scene uh, we have black and white. If you want to convert it to black and white, you would do that here. And you have a black and white mix, but it's a little limited. You only have red, green, blue, and then you have tone and intensity. It doesn't have like all the sliders that uh, most applications have. You have a uh, color monochrome, which is, it makes it a black and white image, but then you're toning the entire scene with a color. So if you want like a sepia tone or something like that, you come in here do something more yellow or brown and take the intensity down or something that obviously isn't sepia but you get the idea hopefully of what you can do if you wanted to do something with this you would reset it and turn it off don't need to do it here we have channel mixer uh, this is similar to what you would see in uh, photoshop where you're kind of changing the mix of the red green and blue for each of those channels um it's kind of an advanced Photoshop tool, in my opinion. It's not something most people use, so I don't think you need to use it if you're just editing images. It has LUTs, uh, so you can come in and pick a LUT. It's got something I, I find kind of interesting here, color blindness. Not really sure what this is all about, but it will, I guess, mimic what a totally blue colorblind person might see when they look at the image. I'm not really sure, but it has a lot of different types of looks here. Some are pretty cool. Some are kind of overbearing. But if you want to use a LUT, they're available here as well. Um, I'm not sure. I Let me see real quick. I don't, don't know if you could add your own LUT. Um, I guess Reveal and Finder, if you do that, it will show where they are. And maybe you could put your own in here, and then they'll show up in the list. I haven't tried that yet. If anyone has, uh, let us know in the comments. But um, maybe that's... How you could add your own LUTs. Uh, vignette, you could turn that on. You could see it defaults to this really heavy dark vignette. You could go make it white, dark, change the intensity of the black with this, make it softer with this. Let's add a little bit of a vignette. Uh, it has sharpen, so you could sharpen uh, his radius and intensity. It sharpens the entire image. Um, don't need to sharpen this, I don't think. And it has grain where you could add grain. Now, what doesn't it have? I don't see really any masking. Um, maybe I'm wrong, but I played with it a lot, and I don't see any masking at all where I could come in here and do adjustments just to the monkey's face or something like that. Now, again, if you go up here and look at the tools, we have this ML, this machine learning, so it's going to enhance the entire photo. That's just an auto adjustment. We have the repair tool, and then we have a clone stamp tool. We have the crop tool. We have our color adjustment tools these are what we just used we have this drop down and here you could see that you could do that denoise that i just did you also could do super resolution which just increases the resolution of the image because i cropped this so heavily that is something i probably want to do here now if i, I don't want to do that 
If I go to show info, you'll see right now uh, it's 1,214 by 1519. So if I go up here and I do super resolution, it's going to increase the resolution. Again, it uses AI to do this. And you can see now it's 2428 by 3038. So I guess it doubles the resolution. And you could use the slider. Uh, you could zoom in again to see what it did. It looks like it made it a little sharper. Like there's before, and there's after, before, after. Kind of like that effect, what it did. And then to get rid of, uh, just click done here to get rid of that split screen. To get rid of the info thing, you need to go back up here and then hide info. So if we go to here again, uh, you could see that um, there's, you know, you could reset the super resolution, reset the denoise. You could copy the adjustments to paste them to another image could auto crop to square. I'm not sure why you want to do that. You have another thing where you could increase the resolution again. Let's just try that for the sake of doing it. And it's, I'm not sure how that works. I haven't tried that, but it's not doing it. It's just prompting me to go to the next image. So I guess that's really not an option once you do increase the resolution once. Um, then you could export it as a JPEG, export it as a PNG file. Uh, you could see there. That's it. I mean, match colors is an option that uh, you could use another image to try to get that feel and color theme from that image onto your own image. I haven't done that. I haven't tried it, so I'm not sure how good that is. Now, if you want to sh export it, though, I got sidetracked, to something other than JPEG or PNG, you would go up here to export. And then you could go to this drop down and you could see you have HEIC, AVIF. Uh, beside PNG and JPEG, you have TIFF, and then you have Open EXR, and then you have a Photomator fire file if you want to do that. But I don't want to do any of that. So that's Photomator, and I don't really think it's Lightroom Killer, but I, it's a nice app. It seems to do a pretty good job of photo editing. It is non-destructive, so if you don't like anything you've done here, what you could do, go is go up here where it says Revert to Original, and you'll be right back to the original image and none of your edits are permanent. It's now an image with a lot of noise. If I zoom in again, uh, you can see there's, you know, it removed the noise reduction and everything. So um, you want me to do more videos on Photomator? I'll experiment with it a little more. I'll maybe do some of the, the uh, heel tools here and the clone stamp tool, some other things. Let me know in the comments. Um, it's not something I would probably use because I'm so dedicated to using the other apps that I do videos on so much, but it is an alternative, um, to Lightroom. If you don't want to pay Adobe money, you could pay Apple money. So, you know, one humongous company versus another humongous company. It's up to you. Thank you everyone who watches my videos. I really do appreciate it. I'll talk to you guys soon.